I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and I am so glad, as always, that you're here. This is um, going to be such a fun show. This is, a, this is an episode. Um, we've been asked about this one, and we're so glad to have her here today. We have Hannah Owens, who played Emily on Barney and Friends in seasons five and six. And I am thrilled you're here, Hannah. Hey, I'm so happy I finally made it on here. Well, you know, it's so funny when it, it comes to this, we're reaching out to so many people and just things happen. Life happens. Yeah. But you're here today and I'm thrilled you're here. Yeah, me too. I'm in the middle of moving, so it's a little chaotic in here, but I'm here. Well, you know, COVID has just been chaotic. Life has been chaotic. So, you know, we just do what we do and, and you're here and this is going to be fun. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, sorry about my voice. I played really late last night. So, well, we I want to, <laughs> hey, no, no, no. And I want to get into that. I want to talk about what you're doing. And I think it's so cool. And so we'll definitely get there too. Um, and obviously, we're going to talk about Barney, but I kind of want to start off. How did you get into the industry? How did you even get into doing any acting? Um, I was a very obnoxious child. <laughs> um, I, and I, I begged my parents to let me do um, theater or anything of the sort. And um, I did stuff at Casa Mignana here in Fort Worth yes. uh, when I was starting when I was a little bitty. And I had an agent for like commercials and stuff. I did like local commercials and uh, I begged my parents to let me go to the open call that was in Las Colinas for Barney. And my mom was like, I don't know. And I had my dad wrap around my finger. So I just asked him like 27 times. And finally he said, yes. And uh, so we went and um, that was like the big, that was the biggest acting thing that I had done. And after that, I, I did a ton of theater, which I still love. But so did, did you know Barney at that point? Did you know, did you know of the show? Yes, I have. They have videos and all sorts of pictures of me with all of my Barney stuffed animals and baby bops. And I was a huge, huge fan. Well, you know, it's so funny because that would have been probably in, I don't remember what year that was, but I'm guessing I was on the road at that point. We had the shows going out, Barney's Big mm -hmm. Surprise and, and all of that because uh, it would probably... have been 97, 98, something like that, starting Okay. Off. So this is when he was really in his heights. Yeah. When the show was really big. And they'd been in Las Colinas, I think, a couple years at that point. Yeah, they had. Um, so it was it was a really big deal. Um, and I think, as I recall, this was when, because we've had several of these people on the show. We, You were doing the puppet. So Scooter was there, Scooter McNutty. Yes. Yeah, he was on and Office. Um, yeah, remember, uh, I remember the first time I saw Office Space. I was like, "Mom, that's Scooter. That's Scooter." <laughs> <laughs> and had you worked with anyone with? Because this would have been David Joyner and Jeff Ayers and Jeff Brooks and mm -hmm. Bob West, Bob Patty and, and Patty and Julie. Yeah. Um, what was that? What was that whole part? We're going with, with costume characters and voiceover actors and because there was a lot going that on. That was, yeah, I think that um, I, I just kind of just, because like, I didn't know how any of that stuff worked. I was six. Right. And um, so I remember the first day being like, whoa, none of this stuff is real. And then from then on, it was just so normal to me. And it wasn't like I wouldn't go tell my friends about it. It was just something that I felt like I got to be part of this like secret cool thing. And it's not really real, but I'm in on the secret. So, well, right. But it, you know, it's interesting you say that it obviously the purple dinosaur is not real, but 
everything behind it's real, right? But it, all of it felt real. Like, yeah, everything. I mean, when we were teaching lessons, we were, when I was reading lines, I was learning the same lessons at the same time because I was six. <laughs> You know, that's that's fascinating. We've had several of the kids on the sh on the show. That's why I love doing this, because I learned something. I've never mm -hmm. really thought of it that way. And that's really interesting that the lessons <laughs> that, that the show was teaching, you were learning them at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you remember the audition? I do. I sang. Um, I didn't know that they were going to make me sing. I was just such like, and I'm very much like this now. I was a fly by the seat of my pants kid. I'm a very much fly by the seat of my pants person. So I just strolled in there like, hey. <laughs> and uh, they told me to sing a song. So I sang, I love you, you love me. <laughs> and I got a call back. Um, oh but it was very in, out, simple. I don't, I don't remember it lasting more than 20 minutes. It was so fast. And then there were a lot more auditions after that. <laughs> oh, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. Um, did they have you do any movement? Did you do any dance at that point? Um, not on the first one. I think we kind of, you know, like played around to see how we you danced around with the other kids and stuff. But no, uh, I think we didn't start doing that until the second audition. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting. And and I am I'm friends with some of the producers. I know a lot of, of, of mindset. I've heard a lot uh, over the years what they're looking for. But, it, you know, it's really interesting because I think you had, you know, you had singers, you had dancers, you didn't have to do everything, right? They, they right. would, you know, they had specific looks they were looking for, but they would work on your strengths. So if you were the singer, they would give you solos. If you were the dancer, you would get that, that kind of thing. Right. It, it Everybody seems... had their niche, which is, I think is, was important too. Because if everybody was good at everything, that wouldn't be realistic. <laughs> well, no, it wouldn't. And that's really what the show was about, right? That yeah. whatever you are, whatever you do is what makes you special. Um, I, I do remember I the first time my brother, so I'm eight and a half years older than my brother. Okay. And when he was watching it, my first, like two years on it or something, he was watching it and I was standing in the living room and he was looking at the TV and he looked over at me and look back at the TV, and he was so confused that I could be at two places in one time. <laughs> and what, how did you explain that to him? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I My mom took care of that one. <laughs> so you get on the show, and I always find this, this part interesting, was because there's a lot going on, obviously, with everything. And in, at that time, even more, you know, you have puppets and costume characters and kids and animals and, and you name some special guests that came on. Um, was memorizing lines difficult for you? Yes, but I also, I was one of the only kids that in my, at my time, I don't know about mm -hmm. um, before or after, but I was one of the only kids that made, uh, my school made me withdraw every time I would film. So, okay. I had to film like three episodes back to back and then go to school for like a month. And then I would film three or four episodes back to back and go to school for a month um, to whereas the other kids kind of had like a week in between. And so I would be memorizing lines for one and getting my revisions for that episode. And then while I'm getting my revisions for that episode, I'm memorizing lines for the next week. And that was hard, but I, I got used to it. My first year was pretty brutal with lines um and then you were doing you were doing school there though as well right with barney mm -hmm. yes well, yeah. well we'll get we'll get into that there's so much i want to talk to you about um <laughs> i, I want to keep going down this path uh and then the singing was that easy for you because that's what you're doing now music has become such an important part of your life mm -hmm. um was that something that was natural to you or did you have to work on that? That that was natural. It was super fun for me. That was my favorite part of anything, especially when we got to go into the recording studio every week and and record either our parts or the parts that were all together. That was my favorite time of the week is when we got to go to the studio. So, yeah, I loved that part of it. Well, and was it easy because you knew that, you know, I mean, obviously some of those songs we were doing every all the time. 
So was mm-hmm. that easy that you probably already knew I love you and maybe yeah, rain, I knew some of them. There were definitely lots of new ones. But uh, my parents said that they would wake up like singing the songs because <laughs> I would just have to listen to them on repeat all the time. <laughs> well, a lot of those songs just stay with you. Uh huh. They are all very catchy. <laughs> And then how was the movement? How was the dances for you? The dances were fun. I definitely wasn't the most um, uh, choreographed, gifted human in the bunch, but that was, I loved it. I thought it was so fun. Um, And anytime I got to shine, I was like, yeah, they picked me. (laughs) So the dancing was super fun for me too. And I danced um, after that for a long time. Well, and I, I will get into so much I want to get into. Uh, you worked with Miss Penny at that time, right? Yes. Your thoughts on Miss Penny? Oh, man, I was so scared of Miss Penny. But she, uh, yeah, Miss Penny was a very interesting, powerful, amazing human. Miss Penny was awesome and terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I understand that I worked with Miss Penny for a, for a long time. But what, Did you what, ever see somebody get hiccups in front of her? Was oh, that a yeah, thing? yeah, 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 it was a thing. <laughs> it was a thing. It was a thing. I, I think she, because I, I was not a big mover as well. I had to get a lot of help um, mm-hmm. to get me down to where, you know, later down the line, I did pretty well. But it, it took me a while to get there. And I think she was just amazing at looking at someone's ability and um and helping them and encouraging oh yeah them. And, she and, would, yeah and she could tell you were working on it then you know that's all you she were expected. golden yeah right oh and right. she would if somebody told you told you something that she didn't like she would stick up for us kids in a heartbeat so fast she yelled at so many people for me <laughs> <laughs> well i you know and that's an that's an interesting it's an interesting point um with, with as much going on, I think for, for the kids, if you put too many voices in your head, it, it, where Miss Pe- if you've got one voice encouraging and that, helping and yeah. going, you know, especially th- those other things, what was it like? Um, I mean, you're in front of a lot of people, camera mm-hmm. people and lighting and producers and directors and oh, yeah. performers and all that. Was it intimidating when you first got on that set? Yes. I had no idea. I was, I mean, I just had no idea that that many people were needed for something like that. And I don't know that I had really been around that many grownups at one time by myself. You know, I remember the first day where my parents, because I think the first week I was there, my parents could come, like sit in. And then the, the first week that I did it by myself, I was like, oh wow (laughs) this is this is huge but I uh I learned how to I think use I learned how to talk more like an adult and use better manners because of all that too I think it was I think that was super super helpful to me yeah you know it was such a supportive group Mm -hmm. um we you know we talk about a family we talk about um, all the time. I mean, one of the reasons I'm talking to you is because Jeff Ayers, who I love on this planet, was like, oh my gosh, you got to talk to Hannah. You got to talk to Hannah. You got to talk to Hannah. She's so great. <laughs> like people are so supportive. Um, I know about your music that you're doing now because of the same thing. You got to see what she's doing and all yeah. of that stuff. And it's just a supportive group um, that probably once you started realizing that made it a little easier because it's got to be oh, yeah. when you first go out on the set yeah it was I think yeah it was the easiest I mean partly because I was so little but I think it had the easiness of it is why I don't I don't really remember the transition of being not on Barney to being on Barney it was just it was simple and it just felt normal so all of a sudden I was there and I had a new family and it was you know a fun thing was it hard when you had the when you weren't in episodes when you have to go back to school for a month? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I would always just I would, mom. What do you think they're doing? What do you think <laughs> they're doing right now? 
I wanted to hang out with my friends and that meant everybody. Right. And then what's it like when the first episode comes out and you see yourself on TV? Bizarre. That was very bizarre. Um, my teacher at the time talked the whole second grade into watching my episode. <laughs> And so we all sat and watched it. And some people, some kids made fun of me, but a lot of kids were like, this is awesome. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Were but you... I do remember the first time I ever was critical of myself and that was it. <laughs> Watching myself back on TV. It's so funny because that's the question I was getting ready to ask you. Were you critical of yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and critical in what way? Uh, of, of, of singing or movement or facial expressions or uh, my facial expressions my mainly my facial expressions because I made some really funny faces <laughs> um and I think sometimes my lines like I knew when I kind of they took what they could use because I just kept skipping over something but that was all you know a lot just myself nobody else knew sure well sure <laughs> Um, well, and, and my gosh, I mean, six and seven and eight years old, <laughs> yeah. you know, cause that's something obviously we know as the adults coming into this as performers, as adults is that you are working with kids and mm -hmm. I know how hard it was for me when I was doing the show to have to, you know, the movements and the, the lights and the cameras. And the, I mean, it is a lot. And I'm a grown adult. And so, you, you know, you understand that. Was, were you hard on yourself about it? Or were you? <laughs> I think, I don't think I was hard on myself about it until late, until like probably my last year doing it. Because then I had kind of grown up a little bit. And uh, yeah, I definitely think I was, I was pretty good until probably my last year. And then. I was pretty hard on myself every once in a while, not always. Usually there was so much going on and we were doing so much stuff that I didn't have time to even think about what I did wrong. Did you have, did you have favorite things to do? Was it to, to sing or the dancing or working with the puppets or um, favorite episodes? I loved when we did movies and we got to change up the sets and we got crazy sets and I, it would, it would blow my mind, the sets that we got to hang out on for two weeks, you know, um, that pop wheelie movie that I did with all that set was incredible. It was so cool. Um, that was probably my favorite part. Um, and then were you, did you start doing plays and theater after this or were you doing that while you were doing Barney? I did, um, I did The Sound of Music while I was doing Barney and Captain Von Trapp was, I forget his name now, um, the guy that played, uh, the guy that was in Wishbone. Uh, anyway, he oh, was- Oh, Larry, Larry Brantley? Yeah. He was. Uh, did, the did, the voice, did, did the voice of Wishbone? No, no, not the voice oh. of Wishbone. The, uh, the Wishbone's owner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Also. Anyway, I don't remember his name, but he was, uh, he was Captain Von Trapp in that show. Um, and then I, kept, I stuck with Casa and did some other theater stuff after we quit, uh, after we went on hiatus with Barney. Is that when you, when you ended with Barney, when they went on hiatus? Mm -hmm. So you did it up till then? Yep. Um, I can already know the answer to, to this. How how difficult was that? Oh, that was one probably one of the most crushing. Uh, I remember the end of the rap party. I didn't. I didn't. I had no idea that it would affect me like that. And we watched, you know, the blooper reels with everybody, and that was a mm -hmm. fancy rap party. They did it <laughs> big, and. Um, we where was Flipper it? Where Reels. was it at? Where was it at? Oh gosh, I don't. I'd have to ask my mom. I don't even remember. I just remember that we were dressed to the night. It was like black tie. <laughs> um, awesome. But uh, and then they played this video with all these sad songs about missing everybody, and 
oh my gosh, me and the other kids just hugged and cried and cried and cried. And I cried all the way home and I cried for the day after. I just couldn't imagine not doing anymore. And then, and then it got to the point where it was kind of nice that I didn't have to work all the time. <laughs> but, yeah. and I was, and I kept up with everybody for a good amount of time too. So. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, those tough things that it's just part of the business, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it's obviously much harder when you're a kid and not really understanding yeah, well, and then, then I had a to business get, and why things, you know. And then I had to make do. sure that it wasn't me. Like I didn't do anything oh, wrong, right. you know, which sure. it wasn't. Oh no, um, absolutely, absolutely yeah. not. And that's a t and that is a tough thing for kids to understand that. You know, we I went through that a lot with, with some of the kids that no longer, and it's heartbreaking because a lot of times it was just because they they grew up, they got older, they you know those kind of things. Right. Um. Yeah. So let's talk about because I step, I have lots more Barney questions, but I want to I want to talk about music because that has been such an important. Where did all this come from? Um, it's been a huge part I, of your your life. Yeah, I sang for forever, and um, I got out of high school and I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. So I kind of I went to school online and I worked and. Um, I sang in a few bands here and there, uh, and then I moved to LA on a whim, and I met up with a bunch of Barney people there for a little bit. And who, who'd you meet up with? Uh, I saw David. I saw Erica Rhodes. Um, who else did I see? They still lived here. Because we've had Erica yeah, I Rose saw on, Angel. Had her, her on oh, you have? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was a fun day. Several of us got together. and uh, But I didn't, I didn't last very long in LA. I did not like it. So I moved <laughs> back. And then um, I found out about the uh, music scene in DFW and how um, talented and awesome and um, how much different I thought it it was so much different than I thought it was and um so I started singing and I started doing like uh harmony session work and background vocals and stuff and uh I went through a really bad breakup with a musician and I didn't know how to play an instrument and I was so mad and frustrated uh that I decided I was going to teach myself how to play guitar. And so I did. And now I write and play guitar and sing. I, I love, I love all this. I love all this. This is another reason I love having people on this and doing this show, because that's a story that, you know, is typical in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. But you kept going, and that's the part that makes this whole so so interesting, right? Breakups happen, LA right. happens, all of those things. But you did all of those things, and mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating. And it just seems like you have this drive within you. Obviously, you had it when you were six years old. You wanted to go be on a on a show and got on a, on a show, which was very difficult, very difficult because so many kids audition for that and then hear same thing. Um, what is it that drives you about this industry, about entertainment, whether it's performing or singing? I think for me right now, I'm, I'm trying to focus on like the artistry of all of it. Um, I'm super determined to not let, um, I, to not let me being an artist deter, like me not wanting a real job or, you know, I can, I can make anything I want a real job and I can make right. anything that I'm passionate about a real job. And so sure. I've always felt like that. And I think that that's my number one drive is I want to do stuff that makes me happy. And if that's drawing or singing or writing or whatever, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do something that doesn't make me happy. Well, I, I have that you know, we, we get bit by that creative bug where you just have to be creative. Um, I'd love to hear your version. Of, what is that for you where you just, you have to be creative? It's just part of your, part of your life. 
Um, like, what do I do or how does that? Well, well expl explain that. Like, because I'm in the same boat, right? I, I can do a job. I can do all those kind of things. But if I'm not being creative, whether it's a, a podcast or I've done photography, I, I mean, I'm the worst singer in the world. I don't know that I've ever told this on the show, but I went and took singing classes in college and got up in front of hundreds of people. And I, and I was absolutely horrible. And my teacher gave me an A in the class. And she goes, if, if your passion could match your voice, you'd be the best singer in this world. Like there's, there's just things you have to do. So I failed right. too in this industry, but I just keep going because it's just within me. I can't really explain it, but I just have to be creative. If you can explain it, what is it? What is that for you? Just the, the, that keeps you going, even if you're told no, or you, you know. I just feel like I have to, I don't think that I really have. I mean, I know that sounds like so simple and black and white, but right. I think for me and my brain, the way that I'm wired and the way that I work, I think that I have to, I don't think I have a choice. If right. I did something that didn't, um, that didn't use my weirdness and wildness and artistry, I would go crazy. And I think I would be a very unhappy uh, probably unkind person <laughs> and I don't want to be any of those things <laughs> right R right and and I'm guessing because we I think have some of this in common failing is really not failing if, if you're being creative and you're going at it whether I get the job or not or whether I'm great or not I di I did it I found out okay that's not my path I'm going to go a different path that's, right for seem me to have that, that too yeah. I mean, that's like, um, with my writing, I'm really hard on that's, I have a, I struggle with being hard on myself with writing, but like you're saying, if I show up to my, if like, I've been calling it showing up to the page, I just finished this really incredible book, um, called the artist way. But, uh, if I show up to the page every day, it doesn't matter if it's good or not, but if I'm putting in my due diligence and I'm putting in the, if I'm treating it like a, like a job still, Right. And I'm still showing up and doing my work. It will some it it will work out. It will eventually something will come out. So, what type of music do you do? That's the hardest question in the world. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't so, know. It's really sad and it's really <laughs> slow. <laughs> but is it something? Do you, you are you developing? Do you go okay? I want to go kind of this path. Obviously, you've added guitar. Yeah, I definitely, I do, I, I love the um, kind of alternative singer songwriter um, type stuff. Uh, I don't, it's, it's not country, which <laughs> I love me some country music. I'm just, it's just not for me. Right. And, um, but there's like, I, I don't know if you know who Brandy Carlisle is. Um, I do. But Brandy Carlisle and, Phoebe Bridgers and, and those types of artists, they're writing and they're just like pouring out their soul to people and making other people feel like, oh my gosh, it's going to be okay. Other people feel like this. I want to make people feel like that. I, that's the kind of music I want to make. Now, so you perform a lot. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that like? Getting well, in front of a crowd with your music. And perform for a good six months it was non-existent because right. of the pandemic or probably longer than that right but, um so i so it's really funny i was so outgoing and charismatic and i didn't care when i was a kid and i was in front of you know cameras all the time and now when it comes to, i become a very i get on stage and i close my eyes and i become this very like almost meek I don't like that word but meek in my music and I don't know if it's because I'm just still new at it or if it's because it's personal stuff or what but it's definitely different than me being entertaining people in front of cameras putting I think putting my words in front of people and I can see their reactions is a, is a lot more terrifying <laughs> why is that uh, well, if you're behind a camera, you can't see it, the other people that sure. are, you know, so this sure. is just, it's, 
it's just a way different, I guess it's just a way different uh, angle of it. Well, I'm curious if, so if you're doing something like Barney or, or any of the plays that you've done or things like that, you're performing someone else's material, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, when you're doing, you know, Mr. Knickerbocker, right? This, someone else wrote that, someone else is doing that. But when you're performing a song that you wrote, right? So it's not only your, but it's, it's you, right? It's all me, yeah. Is, yeah. is, th is that even, is that more difficult to do something of that nature where? Absolutely. It, it, it's, it's your music. Yeah, absolutely. For me, anyway. No, I, well, that's what I would think. Cause I, that's one, you know, that's something I haven't done. So it's, mm -hmm. I'm curious about that. Um, where do, where do these songs come from? Is it life experiences? Is it, is it things you've, you felt, you've seen? But I think for the most part, it's life experiences. I, I'm trying to work on, um, like I said, I'm trying to write every day and, and just get little things out, even if it's stuff that I see, stuff going on with other people, because I'd like to get to the point where I'm not relying on life experiences because it's really hard to write when I'm really happy. <laughs> and, you know, I've been really happy for a while. So it's really hard for me to write when everything's going great and I want to figure out a way that I don't have to write from a place of you know sad every time but we're getting there well that's interesting though why is that I don't know I so I had this I this is something really cool that happened I just got out I just got done with this writing class and one of our guest speakers was Mark Cohn the guy that wrote Walking in Memphis Mm -hmm. and um so I was telling him that and I was like why, why is that and he was like that's 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 me like don't that's not if you that's what if you're good at something and if you're good at writing something emotional or or sad or whatever then don't make yourself not be good at it just keep keep on with what you're good at because that's what he tried to do and obviously did a great job of it but what did you learn from your Barney days that you put into the days now? Work ethic. <laughs> Definitely work ethic. And I think um, treating people, if, if people have interest in what I'm doing, even if I, and this, this sounds ugly and I don't mean it ugly, even if I have less, less interest in what they're doing than what, they have interest in what I'm doing. I should not be any more, I should not be any less kind to somebody. I think that, I think that my years on that show taught me how to treat people because I was shown that people could be very kind to me and treat me with respect, even as a child. And so I think that I not only expect that from others, but I immediately want to give that to others also. And that helps in uh, entertainment career. Yeah, I, I think it's so much so fascinating. Uh, and I love that I love that you said that. Because that was my experience as well. And we look at the times we're in right now. And we were doing it back in the in the 90s. Like, it was just how you like, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> I, right? Right? I, I'm, I'm trying to get this out because I hear all this I love, I, I love that you're like stuttering like that because when people, when, when I get on it, like when I get on a be kind of people and I don't understand, it's, I start to stutter like that because it just does not, it doesn't compute in my head how, how you don't, you right. know? Right. It, it's not something new. I didn't need to, to learn how to love people or to respect people or do all those things. Um, we weren't told when we were doing that show or any aspect of Barney you know, you got to treat this or this or, or, or that. No, I never saw anyone get in trouble for all the problems we're having. We didn't have those problems. It was a mutual <laughs> respect for absolutely everyone. And if every if anyone was happy, like we we're talking about, if you were having struggles with, with dance, then someone helped you with dance. You yeah. didn't get belittled, you didn't get, or I didn't, or whatever it may be. 
No. Um, it, it was really, it was really authentic. It was really true. We talk about love all the time. There absolutely was, and still is. Yeah, it's amazing how many. I mean, even like us being in contact, and you know what a small little world that Barney Group was because you know, I keep in contact with some of the kids. I'm still Facebook friends with most of them. Um, I, you know, they keep up with me. I think it's just all a very, I'm just so glad that I, it's such a different thing that I got to experience than other kids. And I think that, I just don't think that I would be the person that I was, that I am without that. I think that it really shaped me in a, in a good way. Did you ever have the opportunity to see fans? Did you ever make a wishes or, or any of those aspects? Did you ever see any of that? I never got to do any big, we never did big promo stuff like that. Um, I would, I kind of wish that we would have because I loved anytime we had like certain fans come to the set. Um, that was my favorite. And uh, just, I remember like, going to the green room afterwards, seeing this girl and her hugging me and crying because she never thought that she would. And I was like seven and this girl was just so excited to meet me. And, you know, every, every, I thought it was so great, but I went to my, I went to the, I don't know, the green room or the bathroom or something afterwards. And I cried because I just didn't think that, that I would be able to touch somebody like that. And it was, those were my favorites. Well, that's where I was going because I had those experiences as well, but I'd obviously never seen anything like that in my, in my life beforehand. And that's one of the many things that, that really changed my life. When you see the effect that you can have on someone. Yeah. Cause you're, you're was, doing a it, job that you love. Right. But then you realize, Oh my gosh, I, I, people love what, what you're doing. Yeah. And they really, really loved it. I mean, people still, people still love what I'm, I, you know, and it's, and that's great. I think that that's, that just goes to show how special of a thing that it was and how, I don't think that there's, there was ever, I look at cast, like, cause I look at shows differently now. Cause I'm like, I wonder what was going on behind, you know, I wonder if everybody was happy. I wonder because with ours, I feel like for the most part, everybody was happy and kind and helpful. And I just don't think that you, you find a group of 80 to a hundred people at a time that are always that kind to each other anymore. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. Cause I, I feel the same, the same way. And, you know, since I started doing this, everyone I've reached out to is like, oh my gosh, Carrie, I'd love to come on. I'd love to talk and I'd love to tell my stories. And, and I don't run into that. I, I don't run into anyone. Um, sure, we all had things in life. There, there's no question about that. But everyone's experience really seems to be something that they enjoyed and they loved and, mm -hmm. and it's fascinating. So you now go into what you're doing now and singing and performing. What is that like for you when someone comes and says, you know, this song meant something to me or your performance meant something or I love coming to see you? What is that like? Um, it's incredible. And like last week I played a show and this, uh, a de a, this guy came up to me and he said, um, I wrote, there's a song that I wrote called Three Years Later and it's basically about somebody telling you that, you know, you need to just change a little bit and a little bit at a time, just changing yourself. And, and that's not fair. And um, so this guy came up to me and he was not very much older than me, probably mid to late thirties. And he said, I have a daughter and I just want to play that song and repeat for her. So she knows how to treat herself and she knows how to think. And so she, he just said really awesome things about him wanting to hear that for his daughter. And I was like, Oh, thanks. You know, it just, it doesn't get old and it's, it's really incredible. That's a, another motivation that makes me want to keep doing it. So where do you see it going? I don't know. I got to start making money. <laughs> well, um, sure. 
absolutely. <laughs> and that is that is the hard part about this industry. You know, yeah. you have to find you have to find that balance, obviously. Right. And I um so right now I do uh I bartend several nights a week. Um and that pretty much takes up takes care of anything that I need it to. But uh that opens me up to play four gigs a week. And um I now that uh Texas is starting to open up a little bit more. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot more um, gigs and stuff, which is exciting, but uh, I'm releasing a record in several months. And I don't know that I, I just want to be able to, I think just learn more and write more, but I, I refuse to not be in the industry at least for another seven eight years, you know, I, I have to, I really want to give this my all. And I don't know if that means that I'll be a performer for forever, but I want to do something in it for forever. So I don't know exactly what that entails. Well, let's talk about a, a, a new album. Yeah. So did you write everything? Um, so there's two songs on the record. There, it's a, it's an EP. So there's six okay. songs. Four of them I wrote, uh, two of them I didn't write. My producer wrote one um, and he had had it a from a long time ago and I just loved it. And he was like, you need this song. And it's actually called um, Don't Wanna Live in LA. So it was like <laughs> kind of perfect. <laughs> and he was like, no, you need this song. This I, I get it. Um, and then another one was my really good friend's gate, uh, my really good friend Gates Houghton. Uh, she wrote a song called Tequila. And I used to be in a girl band called Wandering Daisy. And we did that song for a while. And she moved to New Mexico. She had a baby and moved to New Mexico. And, and then I started doing my own solo stuff. But Gates was like, Do you still want to record my song? And I was like, yes, please. Um, so. There's two songs on there that I didn't write and four songs that I did, but. I can't stop smiling about don't want to live in LA. I have, <laughs> and look, I, I've got, we have fans from LA. I've got so many friends in LA. I have worked no, in LA. No, it's nothing against LA. <laughs> but, but, you know, I talk about on this show constantly. I'm a Texas guy through and through. I have traveled the world. I've traveled everywhere in the US with touring for years and years and years mm -hmm. and years and I love it here and and so I can I I can get <laughs> I can't wait to hear that song because I can I can yeah. get it I can get it because uh, and I and I loved what you said earlier about uh, learning about the DFW um, music scene because I think that's so I think that's so important the talent here is on real I mean I, I'm sure the talent everywhere is unreal it's just um not being focused on like it should probably but sure the especially the Fort Worth music scene lately it's just um it's real and there's a camaraderie com camaraderie about it that is pretty unmatchable in a lot of places I think it's a really neat thing going on well several things on that you know, back in the day, it was you go to LA or you go to New York, and that has just really changed. Every everywhere has got got seams now, and you, you could be successful. Um, I got my my Fort Worth shirt on here. I know, I saw it. I, was I like, yeah. I'm a big Fort Worth. Uh, I used to live in Dallas and, and still love Dallas, but I am Fort Worth all the way through and through. My dad was was born in Fort Worth, so I feel like I've I finally come home to the place I'm supposed to be at. <laughs> um, so I, I love Fort Worth. I love what they're doing. I don't think, unfortunately, they get hit behind Dallas a lot. Um, and We're so working I, on it. They're working I, well, so hard. I love it. And I was looking at the places you play and I was like, oh my gosh, these are so many places that I, lo that I love. Um, <laughs> and so I'm excited that that's going on and getting out of there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what happened last year. What was it like for you for COVID? the hit for a performer and all of a sudden you can't go out and perform? Um, so I, so this record that I'm going to release soon, I actually, I got my master's back the day before everything shut down. Wow. So I was 
heartbroken <laughs> because I wasn't going to release it when everything was shut down. And I was like, sure. well, maybe, maybe things will get better. And then things just, I mean, obviously things got worse. Right. And, um, you know, one month turned into six months, turned into a year and here we are. But I think, uh, everything happens for a reason in my opinion. And, um, I think I'll release this record when I'm supposed to, but now that things are opening up, venues are booking a lot more and that's great. But that several, the, that six to eight months, um, my boyfriend plays full-time also. And, uh, we, he has an eight-year-old that we have, we take care of. And, um, it was a big, it was a, it was a hard thing. It was a lot of scrambling and, you know, figuring out little ways to, to get by, not just financially, but like mentally, you know, right. It, taking care of our mental health and we're not being able to be creative in the ways that we're used to. So how do we make sure that we're okay too? Right. Yeah. We I think that, <laughs> what, that's, you're still smiling. You're still happy. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we just moved into a new house. So that's really great. So. so what's it been like getting back on stage being in front of because I know didn't you do some you did some uh, some stuff on on like this live streams and yeah I did I did a bunch of live streams throughout it um and uh which was honestly was so weird to me because you know you play your song and it's not like in a zoom meeting to where people can like clap back or anything like you're doing a Facebook live or something and so you get done with your song and you just okay I'll go to my next one you know and you don't have any interaction other than with yourself in the screen right and um so then I kind of got used to that and when I had to get back used to playing in front of people that was extra weird too (laughs) but I think everybody no matter what you do I think everybody's just so weirded out right now you know everybody's got things going on and everybody's got their normal normalcies that have been taken away and then getting back used to so well it's funny you say that because we went to see our first show in fort worth uh end of march Mm -hmm. and i'm a i'm a huge country texas country fan and we went we went to see walt wilkins yeah you know walt wilkins singer songwriter out of austin and yes. I think everyone didn't know what to do. Uh, the seats were so that it was all you had to you had to basically buy a seat. There mm-hmm. was no standing, none of that. And I, both sides. I mean, it just felt so good, right? To to hear music, and they were so used to an audience, and it was it kind of like what we're doing here right now. It was just like this dialogue between people and anything they played, every song, everyone just enjoyed it so much. Mm-hmm. I remember, I think the first time that I played like a like an actual venue again, I said, um, I got done with my first song and I saw some people dancing and I said, do y'all remember what it's like to hug people? And then I almost got choked up because I was like, Oh, we're really doing it again, you know. Well, it's so funny, you know. Performers are usually that type of right. We're huggy, touchy, feely, and oh my gosh, I'm in everyone's bubble usually. (laughs) Well, right, and you know, obviously for Barney, I hugged people for 22 years, and all of a sudden, I have to stand away. I can't interact, Um, and I'm home a lot. And, And I'll tell you it it was a, it was tough and finally you know anyone I'd meet the the postman I'd be talking to it was just so great to, <laughs> to talk to people so I can imagine my Amazon and, guy and me got really close right <laughs> right right well I want to finish with some some Barney stuff mm-hmm. do you did you have a favorite song to perform um so I, I know that my favorite movie was that I did was Mother Goose because I sang so much in that one. 
And I think a lot of those songs were my favorite. That was just one of my favorite movies to do. That was the songs in it were great and so nostalgic. Because I say for me, I always loved raindrops. I always loved performing raindrops. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, the producers used to laugh at me because I always liked the green grass grows all around, all around. Oh, I know my favorite one, the popcorn okay. song. <laughs> there you popcorn go. It's really neat. Yep. <laughs> right, 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 right. You just did a lot of party fans happy for doing that. Um, what was it like for you? I've never asked this question because it had several of the, the, the kid actors on. What was it like doing the I Love You song? That obviously became very iconic. What was that like for you when you're, you're actually singing about love? It felt, so I feel like they, everybody in our, in our cast and that was, that was close, crew wise, that was close to the cast made it feel important every time. It was not a throwaway song just because we knew, you know, like the older I get, you know, you, you go into things where you're like, oh, I know this, I got it. And it was never one of those, we know it, we got it situations. It was always a, no, we're, you know, we're, do, we're ending this the right way. We're doing it, you know, and it was always made to feel important. And I thought that that was really cool. What was it like? So you're, we'll just say with, with Barney. So you're acting with Barney. Was it hard for you to figure out like where to look? You know that there's someone in a costume and there's a voice somewhere else. When did, did, did Barney become real for you? Even though you knew, obviously. How was no, that performing with these, with these costume characters? I don't think it ever became real. I think that, but I think that I coincided David and Barney as, because David was such a, a Barney type personality anyway you know, right. and he was, so I think that I, I guess Barney was real in a sense to me because it was like the, the idea of it and the, and the, the dream of it and the teaching of it. And right. um, I think that I probably coincided them together sometimes because sure. I felt like their kindness had the same similarities, but um, I always, I always knew that it was but I didn't, you're right. I didn't ever think of it as fake. It was still very real. Just it was a different, it was a different type of reality. But it was still very real. Yeah, it was, it's interesting because still to this day, I've known and become such good friends with Jeff Ayers. And I mean, Baby Bop and Jeff Ayers to me, I, I've never seen anything like it. Like he just right? became baby. Ba it, it was the same. Was... It was the same. And it was just one of the coolest things that I had been around. Yeah, right, right. When you see something like that, you just, uh, it's interesting. So mm -hmm. favorite moments? I loved um, the bloopers and any time when we would like know that something was going on the blooper reel I loved that I loved the laugh God, we just laughed so much we laughed so much even even if I knew Miss Penny was about to get on to me I'd we'd still giggle with, and she'd laugh with us after after she got on to me too you know we right. just laughed so much all right so how are we going to find your music how do we find can people come see your shows? Yes. Um, Facebook and Instagram is my best right now. I'm building okay. a website right now, but my Instagram is Hannah Owens Music, all one word. Um, that's the easiest to find where I'm playing. <clears throat> and then in a couple months, I'll start posting um, teasers and stuff for my record. And uh, then that'll be on all platforms, Apple and Google and Spotify and all that. And know that they can find them through Purple Roads. All of our social media, yeah. we will promote like crazy and get you out there. And I'm going to come see you. I don't think I well, I know I'm not that far away from you. And yeah. all of those places you play, I go to. So I'm going to look you up. I'm going to come see you as well. Maybe I'll oh. I'll, uh, I'll grab Jeff Ayers on some of. Oh them. my gosh, that would be the best. <laughs> and we'll come. I would you. die. Yeah, we'll we'll come surprise you because because I see those guys, and uh, we'll come show show up 
uh, show you some support. Hannah, I can't thank you for doing this. This has just been great. I've loved talking to you and hearing your stories are just awesome. Thanks for having me. This has been so much fun. Well, we may have to, to bring you back on again and catch up with everything you got going on. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for watching Purple Roads. And remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your Purple Road. We'll see you next week.